We have a brief session of two presentations, but uh, I'm sure the quality will compensate for the quantity. Uh, the first team of speakers from the Danish um, Society for Danish Language and Literature, um, Henrik Lorentzen, Nikolai Sørensen, and Lars Dapp Jensen. And the title of the presentation is Dealing with Unwanted Words in an Online Dictionary, a Non-Invasive Strategy. Thank you. Am I on? Yes. Yeah, good. This is a presentation of a study of log files that we have uh, carried out in our institution. And um, it is, in fact, part two um, of, the, of the study. As we, uh, two years ago, so in, in Tallinn at the last ELEX, did a presentation of, of the log files where we were interested in finding out how we could um, use no matches uh, in, in lemma selection and also exploring the relationship between lookup frequency and corpus frequency. Now this is the second part and we want again to use the log files to see if we can help um, people by referring them to other external sources. Uh, now, log files can be used for a number of purposes. You can uh, find out what people look up. You can find out if they look uh, the words up. Uh, we have mainly been interested in, in finding, in using log files to find out the words that people are looking for, but which they don't find in the dictionary, the so-called no matches. And um, there are, yeah, okay. Here is just um, an overview. When people look for words and they don't get a match, uh, if you go through the list, there are different types of uh, entries or, or, or query strings. Uh, they may look in, look up a word, uh, but don't get a match. They don't get a match because uh, it's not. Even if the word is in the dictionary, they have entered a different form. So the solution to that would be to improve your full form list so that they will get a match. Another common type, as we've seen in several presentations, is uh, spelling errors. Um, people don't always know how to enter the correct spelling form. So the solution to that is to, if you don't have it, introduce an algorithm, uh, a did you mean function. If you have it already, you could improve the algorithm so that's to to provide them with an answer. The third one is uh, perhaps the hardest one. I call it nonsense. If you go through the list, there is a lot of at least apparent nonsense. When I say apparent, it's because it seems like nonsense to us. It may not be nonsense to the user, but we may not know everything, what's going on there. We don't really have a solution to that. Then there are, of course, lemma gaps, which was what we were after last time. There are words. They should perhaps be in the dictionary, uh, but uh, we don't have include. We, we haven't included them so far, and the solution to that is obviously uh, spend more time and money uh, and uh, make the dictionary entries. And in this connection, however, it's the last group that we're after: the what we call unwanted words, um, where people <laughs> look up a word, they don't get an answer, and instead of disappointing them with a simple message, sorry, we don't have that word in the dictionary, better luck next time. We see, we want to refer them to another, another dictionary, another external source where they have a, a record of that word. Another way of looking at it is this. If you see, um, the first part is the good words, the lemma candidates. And these are all examples taken from the no-match list. Um, they are potential lemmas, um, but 
just happen not to be included in the dictionary at the moment. It could also be the second one, which are existing word forms that don't match, because it's, they are both very rare inflectional forms. For instance, the, uh, the definite form, singular, of the plural noun genes. Very rare occasion, but here uh, people may not know as genes is a loan word that is in the plural, so they use the singular form. The second is the bad words, as we call them, words that do not exist. We cannot refer them anywhere because they do not exist, or at least we don't know what they are, if they're nonsense word or spelling errors, we don't want to refer them. But the third group, the unwanted words, are words that exist, but very often they are outside the scope of our dictionary, so we don't want to include them perhaps because they're obsolete, if it is a, a dictionary of contemporary language, or if they are uh, too modern, if it's a historical dictionary, we don't want to include them in the dictionary. It could be proper nouns. We don't, in our dictionaries, include many proper nouns, but people search for them after all, and there are uh, other sources that could help. It could also be words in a language that is not ours, of course, there are many English words, but it could also could be, we find also viscera, which is a Latin word, intestines, or it could be a French word, voiturier. Uh, we don't want to have that in a dictionary of Danish. Could be encyclopedic queries like the Osmanic Empire. It's perfectly common to find that in a lexica, in a, an encyclopedia, but not really a candidate in our dictionary. And finally, you follow these meta-queries. Why do you call the Chinese wall a wonder? Uh, is one of the no matches, and uh, could be the other one. Adjective comparison, where people are looking for answers to grammatical problems. Now, a little bit about the box background. These are the two dictionaries that we've uh, been concerned with. There are two, and um, you can note that um, um, one is contemporary and dynamic, being updated, and the other one is historical and static. So these are the two ones that we have carried out um, the log five studies for in this connection. And as for the empirical uh, data, we investigated one week of lookups earlier this year, and you can see that the um, contemporary dictionary is the more popular with roughly 10 times as much traffic as a historical one. Hardly very surprising. And if you look at the overall success rate, you can see it is in fact quite good, with just over 90% of all lookups uh, resulting in a match in the dictionary. This figure has also improved since we, uh, some years ago, added inflectional form to the uh, full form lexicon to match more queries. And you should also be aware that a large proportion of the traffic comes from Google, uh, so it's indexed already. But Google know that this is an entrant in the, in the dictionary. So the more traffic coming from Google, the more uh, the figure results in a successful match. But just to get the proportions right, what we are dealing with here are the remaining 10% where we would like to help the user um, a little bit better instead of just saying, no, this word is not here. So here is what, how we did the practical investigation. Uh, from the raw data you just saw on the table, we removed all the no matches uh, with non-alphabetical characters, so as to remove, for example, wildcard searches, which technically speaking is a no match because the, there is no exact string matching, but it is nevertheless often a successful search, so we, we got rid of those. And we also removed all the, the no matches that turned out not to be no matches after all. Uh, this is um, mainly due to, for instance, timeout sessions or temporary downtown of the, of the servers um, where the query is registered as a no match, but in fact there may be a word for the query in the base. So we got rid of those also. And finally, we don't distinguish between upper and lower case, so everything was transformed from to lowercase. 
And here are just a few words about the external uh, resources that we used. So we took the no match list and saw if we could match them with the headword list of some other resources to see uh, if we had a match on that, then we couldn't refer. Uh, we used the first one, the Maya, is a historical dictionary of foreign words, or loan words, uh, which we digitized at in our institution and put online last year. Then there is the, the official Danish spelling dictionary. And the third one is a, a database of uh, toponym of place names uh, to cater for all the, uh, the lookup for proper nouns. And finally, we have been looking at uh, Wikipedia, both in uh, the English version and the Danish versions. They have such high numbers because uh, they're referring to page titles. That means also headings within some uh, Wikipedia entrances. So these are what we could um, think of. I mean, there could be other resources that are relevant. Um, obviously, the resources that match the highest number of no matches on the list are those that are most interesting. Um, there could be others, and there are others. We'll come back to that in, in the end. But now to the investigation itself. What we did was take some 300 random no matches and manually register various types. For the historical dictionary, we found these types, um, but we were mainly uh, interested in the last category, the unwanted words. Similarly, for the modern one, the DDO, the Danish dictionary, um, here you, you should know that inflectional forms don't appear in this list as they are taken care of by the full form list. Um, that is, they result in a, in a match, so they don't appear here. Multi-word uh, expressions are not relevant in this connection as they are not uh, headwords in our dictionary. Um, and there are also some good words, of course, uh, words that could be included, but as long as we haven't edited them, it is sensible to direct them to other sources if they are available there. And with that, I think we're ready to, to look at the results. And this is where I hand over to Henrik. OK, can you hear me? Great. Uh, thank you, Lars. Um, I'll go to the results. The results. For ODS, the historical dictionary, we investigated 300 random no matches and found that 22% were inflected forms. They are not taken care of in the historical dictionary. 17% are spelling errors. They are dealt with by means of an algorithm giving suggestions in a did you mean presentation. And 11% of cases, uh, the users try to look up more than one word. Uh, and as Lars said, in this investigation, we are not interested in in multi-word lemmas, only one-word lemmas. So what we, exam we have examined are the remaining 50%, one half, of the no matches that are unknown to the dictionary, and here we label them unwanted. So let's take a closer look at them. Of the unwanted words, 42% were found in some other resource, 62% were found in one or more of our own dictionaries, and 16 were found, 16% were found in one or more of the external resources, Wikipedia or the Danish toponyms list. Turning to DDO, the modern dictionary, we partly see the same pattern. Inflected forms are not an issue here because they are taken care of in contrast to the old dictionary. Um, on the other hand, 37% of the no matches were spelling errors, partly taken care of by the did you mean function. 15% multi-word lookups. Um, but what we want to look at are the 48%, uh, almost half of the words, the queries that were unwant for unwanted words. Of these unwanted words, 46% were found in some other resource. Only 17% were found in one of or more of our own dictionaries. The percentage for ODS, the old dictionary, was 26 and as much as 29% were found in one or more of the external, resor external resources. This percentage was 16 for the other dictionary. So, though we find 
Though we can find 40 to 50% of the unwanted whales, whereas elsewhere, the in internal distribution is reversed. Most possible referrals goes to, go to external resources for the DDO. And when we say unwanted, uh, we should add that they are not all unwanted, as Lars said. Some of them are uh, good enough. Uh, in this sample, between uh, 1 and 2%, they are candidates for inclusion in the Living Dictionary that we update le regularly. And also a few candidates for inclusion as sublimers. But that doesn't change the fact that most of the 66 unwanted words can be referred to some other resource. Uh, so, after the results, let's move to, on to discuss them a little bit. The numbers are different in some respects. Why? An obvious reason that I just mentioned is that inflected forms are not dealt with in the ODS, whereas in the DDO they are connected to the lemma. Thank you. Dealing with inflected forms in the ODS is a long-term project that would indeed reduce the, numbers, the number of no matches. Nevertheless, it is interesting to see, to note, that the DDO has more unsuccessful searches than ODS, and why. A reason may be that the users of ODS are more educated dictionary users, and they are aware that the dictionary is historical. And the sheer difference in user numbers may also play a role. DDO has ten times as many users as ODS, meaning that, that it is used as a kind of general reference work. And this may be the reason for many unsuccessful searches. Another interesting difference is, difference is that uh, no matches in ODS more often lead to a result in an internal resource. The explanation may be that some users search for contemporary words in the historical dictionary and thus they get a reference to the modern dictionary. So the question is, is it at all relevant to direct users to a result outside the dictionary they have consulted? We have looked at samples of no matches for our two largest dictionaries, and we find that for ODS, about 40% can be referred to an internal external, external resource, and for DDO, it, am it amounts to about 50%. So is this enough? Is it worthwhile? We think so. In real figures, if we implement this, for one week, we would be able to supply 2,500 ODS users and 10 times as many, 25,000 DDO users with suggestions for a possible entry in one or more other resources. Of course, we cannot be sure whether the target entry is relevant since we don't know what the users want. But after having looked at the sample, we have a feeling the internal dictionaries are generally likely to provide an answer. And if the user searches for a proper noun, for instance, it's more likely that, that the external resources may come up with a good answer. We'll take a look at that in a little while. Uh, talking of presentation, we think it's very important to find, point out clearly to the user that he or she is now in an external resource. And of course, give due credit to these resources. So here is an example of what we do already. The word intrada, uh, an obsolete word for revenues, cannot be found in the modern dictionary, but it can be looked up in three of, 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 other, of our other dictionaries that cover long loan words and older stages of the, the language. And this is an example of what, of what we don't do yet. The user has tried to find Allerød, the name of a Danish town, in uh, the historical dictionary. It's not there, but two external entries are suggested. Wikipedia, where information about the town, etc., can be found. And in Danish uh, toponyms, where information about the name can be found, meaning, earlier forms, date of first registration, and so on. We hope that this is, will be useful information to some users, at least. We don't know how they will react once it has been implemented, but after a while, we may do a survey to see if uh, they like it or not. So, just to conclude, um, we find that it's relevant to refer to other resources when we deal with words and entities that are unwanted in our dictionaries. If we want them, we include them as far as our time and funding allows us to. We also think it might be useful to refer to other external resources for instance, a large encyclopedia for Danish, 
and dictionaries for Norwegian and Swedish as well. Here spelling will be an issue, of course, but we think we might sort it out. And uh, in fact, we're already in uh, contact with uh, Macmillan uh, in order to see if we can direct users uh, to their site if they search for English words. Uh, in this small sample, uh, I found eight search strings that could be interpreted as English, and not yet, not yet Danish, which they may be in time. <laughs> I looked them up uh, manually in, in Macmillan, which of course won't be the same uh, procedure when we do it automatically in the future. But nevertheless, we found that four uh, of these lead to a direct match, three indirectly to a match via the determine function in Macmillan, and one to an expectedly bad result since routing is probably to do with computing and not with the word to, the verb to route. But as for the other re referrals, you don't know what the users mean by typing this or that, but you guess. So we are ready to cooperate, which is uh, completely in line with the topic of this conference, linking lexical data. So thank you for listening. <laughs>